MSI is locked in a harsh competition uh, with uh, Asus and Gigabyte to attract the most or the greatest amount of gamers out there. And no motherboards better illustrate this uh, than the MPEG Z319 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, a decomplexed gamer centric motherboard which aims to please the most demanding enthusiast gamer out there. Then phases 128 gigabyte of memory support, Wi-Fi, premium sound at 210 bucks. It seems that it has it all. But as any other carbon series, it does come with a lot of expectations. And being MSI flagship motherboard and, and arguably its best retail product, a FOPA is not an option. Question remains, is MSI being paid by the number of words it uses in the title of its motherboards? Are they? Are they? Are they? Well, together, let's find out. The MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, which I will refer from now on as the MPEG Z390 Carbon, is in direct competition with Asus' very own Z390 Strix, as well as Gigabyte's uh, Z390 Aros Pro, both of which I did review for your greatest pleasure on my channel and that you should check at some moment whenever you have time. And in such a competitive and crowded marketplace, what MSI needs to do with this Gaming Pro Carbon AC is to differentiate itself because it starts to be quite a blur over there. And question is, did it or does it or will it? Well, let's see. The MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC comes in an ATX form factor, meaning 24.4 cm wide for 30.5 cm long. It is powered by an LG A1151 CPU socket, which can both support the 8th and 9th generation of Intel Core processor. Via RM-wise, we are dealing with 1150 amps phases, 10 of which are CPU centric and without being overkill, it is enough to surpass the Z390 Strix in terms of overclocking ability, but grades well below the Z390 Hours Pro, which had 1250 amps phases. The heatsinks are rather good, but do not benefit from the MSI latest extended design I very much loved in the MPG Gaming Plus, which also I had reviewed a few months ago and that you should check as well. And, and that's that's a shame because um, when you start overclocking, when you do extreme overclocking with the MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, oh, I'm so good at saying this name now, um, and, and you do extreme overclocking with an i9-9900K, which also is complex to say, um, you will see VRM thermal throttling, but there is no real excuse for this because MSI did have uh, the extended heatsink design at hand, and it was a very inexpensive way to fix this. So something I'd like to change to, or to see change in the future on the next iteration of this motherboard. Memory-wise, obviously, this is where MSI wanted to impress. We have our usual dual-channel configuration, but they do support an unusual 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM overclockable up to 4.4 gigahertz, and Usually a dual channel supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I have only seen two other motherboards doing uh, so, namely the Asus ROG Maximus 11 Hero and um, the Aorus or the Z390 Aorus Pro Revision 1, both of which I also review and should take a look at. And it's surprising because I did not expect it on this motherboard. Um, I think it's where the natural technological flow of things is going towards and it gives some kind of future proofing to this board. So that's a major kudos to MSI and something that I'd like to see a little bit more often on other boards. I really don't see why we're stuck at 64 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, knowing that it does make quite a bit of difference in the performances of your board overall. 
I'd like to also note the presence of indicative LEDs next to every RAM DIMM slot and it will allow us to know if all DIMMs are operational or not, easing our troubleshooting if necessary. Again, kudos to MSI for this. Staying in the memory, the board supports up to two M.2 solid state drives and thanks to our Z390 chipset, they come obtain ready. That does translate in 32 gigabit per second data transfer individually. Obviously, and as usual, that also does translate in quite a bit of overheating and that is precisely why we do have quite a large, bulky, thick and thermo padded heat shield. I want to spare you the branding name of that piece of metal, but I won't. MSI called it the Frother and I'm all into branding. I love branding, but sometimes manufacturers just go a tiny bit too far. Frother or blah. It doesn't take away the fact that this is the biggest piece of metal I have seen on the board and it does a great job at keeping your M.2 solid state drive cool and fast at any activity level. And therefore, this is where I would suggest you put your bootable M.2 solid state drive, if any. Export wise, we have no less than six third generation PCIe slots three single slot single speeds and three 16 slots with different speeds. As in all Z390 powered motherboards, only the closest ones to the CPU can deliver up to full 16 bus speed, meaning this is exactly where you would want your video card for optimal performances. If you're going for a dual GPU configuration, our second PCIe will be sharing bandwidth, giving us an eight by eight bus speed. And finally, if you are going for an unlikely three-way video card configuration, we will have a further shared bandwidth of 8x4x4 by four by four bus speed. Now, since these two PCIe Expresses are the one most likely to be used to carry the heavy weight of our video cards, they have been metallically reinforced, which is always a nice touch. Moving to the I.O., first I want to note the presence of an integrated I.O. plate, which I never take for granted and which will make our first time builder's life much easier. Starting from the left, we have a now more common PS2 mouse keyboard connector, two second generation USB with a 480 megabit transfer rate, four 10 gigabit 3.1 second generation USB plugs, including a type C and surprisingly, no five gigabit USB 3.1 first generation plugs, which doesn't really make sense because as you will see later on in the review, even if you add the USB front panel connector, there's still room provided by the Z390 chipset to add more USB plugs. So I'm a little bit deconcerted because that was an easy move and a mistake easily avoidable uh, especially knowing what the competition is putting on their motherboard. So yeah, MSI, what are you doing? Moving on, we have a 1.2 DisplayPort as well as a 1.4 HDMI output for our CPU integrated graphics. And connectivity wise, we have a gigabit LAN as well as an 802.11 AC dual band Wi-Fi adapter, which will transfer data up to 1.73 gigabit per second. And in addition, a fifth generation Bluetooth adapter. And finally, we have a rather high-end 7.1 channel Realtek audio codec. And I'll allow myself a small note here because um, if you look at Gigabyte and its Aorus series motherboards, they really went far into upgrading their audio quality with their WiMAC capacitors. And here MSI is following suit and doing an amazing job at really giving a, a, a push forward to its usually weaker audio output. So yeah, we're gonna have very nice isolated and clean sounds, especially going towards the gaming section with deep and very pure bass. So yeah, well done to MSI for this. Very quickly and as usual, SATA wise, we have six third generation plugs, which can all transfer data individually up to six gigabit per second and which can operate at red zero, one, five or 10. Now on board wise, we do have two second generation USB connectors, two five gigabit 3.1 first generation USB connectors, the very same kind of USB, which um, absence I did regret when we're talking about the back IO. So yeah, at least we have a couple here. And of course, and thankfully, we have a 10 gigabit Type-C front panel connector, which I love seeing on 
any enthusiast motherboard. Also and finally I'm very happy to see a Thunderbolt 3 connector for extra type C exports which is not luxury on this board. Okay so here I'm going to open a small bracket. Um, answering a few comments I had seen in other videos, Thunderbolt 3 only um, uh, is only present on Intel powered chipsets. This is an Intel technology so you will not find it on AMD powered motherboards. All right, so we just reviewed and seen uh, the rather general aspect of our motherboard, which is quite solid, to be honest. But to seal the deal and to really compete with its rather tough and dire competition, the MPGZ390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC um, will have to equally impress into its enthusiastness uh, uh, era if that makes any sense. And it does start pretty well with seven PWM nested fan connectors on the board. Note that one of them can support an all-in-one water cooler pump and another an old water pump connector for custom water cooling configuration. And here I have a little critique to make. I would have wanted to see a second water pump connector, even though technically, yes, you could maybe try to run the second water pump on another connector, but something I wouldn't advise. And um, for the most enthusiast uh, uh, gamers out there, I would expect to have this option ready, especially knowing that MSI competition is putting two uh, dedicated water pump connectors on their board. So yeah, MSI, I would wake up about this. Before wrapping up this part of the review, I'd like to mention the Easy Debugger, which is of course an enthusiast must when it comes to easily troubleshoot your build without the presence of a QLED screen. RGB wise, starting with a very nice and intense RGB strip hidden under the eye roof, as well as a rather long and equally intense addressable strip soldered into the long side of our PCB. Now, if that was not enough for you, we have also two RGB connectors for RGB exports right here, as well as an RGB addressable connector right there. And as usual, as in any enthusiast motherboard, note that all those RGB LED and RGB strips can see their different effects synced through a proprietary software, which in this case is called Mystic for MSI. Last but not least, we do have a proprietary connector for Corsair only fan and RGB hub, allowing cross brand syncing and control. And that is something I love seeing. And in conclusion, let's go through uh, the name, the MPG. Well, I'm going to start it like this. The MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC will cost you an English bachelor degree to get the title right and about $210 before taxes. And yes, it's absolutely a great motherboard. It is a great enthusiast motherboard and it does tick most of the big boxes that I wanted to tick and namely uh, we do have an impressive memory support with 128 gigabyte of DDR4 support. We have a very solid VRM with the 10 phases or the 10 CPU centric phases uh, I wanted to say. We have a more premium sound etc etc. And I'll go as far as to say that it does provide a bigger bang for you buck than say the Strix Z390. But when you do compare it to the Z390 Aorus Pro, all bets are off. Cost for about $30 or $40 less. It does bring much more on the table. It has an equally premium build. It has more USB plugs on the back panel. It has more CPU centric faces, 12 instead of 10. And um, all of the M.2 solid state drives, for example, have thermo shields. So it is a great motherboard. The MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon AC is a great motherboard, but the pricing is not. And it would be difficult for me to advise you to go buy it, knowing that there is a cheaper and a better option out there. So unless MSI reduces its pricing to match its competition, this otherwise excellent motherboard might not find the place it deserves on the marketplace. I think that's, that says it all.